Good evening, everyone. This is Lyrita Barrett for the Institute for Global Transformation, coming to you with meditations for and with humanity. Today, I'd like to talk to you about our session I'd love for us to convene on spiritual relationships within the one life, which includes several different areas that I'll mention. One amongst them will be right human relations. So when a human being recognizes the bigger picture, that being the one life, there, there's a growing sense of importance and awareness and a sense of patterning that's going on as a result of their understanding of the one life. When humanity or human being in itself recognizes this one life, and we'll call it by many names, I prefer in this particular case, either the divine or the one life, our sense of or our field of relationships begin to grow. and they become highlighted. Our relationships take on a different meaning. Prior to this awareness, one sense of relationships may be somewhat limited, you know, it might include something to the effect of our immediate family, um, friends, maybe those that we go to school with, uh, or our work relationships, our work environment, our, our, where we go to work out. These are our relationships. And also let's include our enemies, those who are we're less friendly with, or we think that we're less friendly with. But for other people, the circle of, uh, that circle of relationships can become, can be rather wide, okay? Um, but as we begin to sense and understand and grow, reorient ourselves to the one life, our sense of relationships expands. Our awareness of the divine in all things attunes to a wider expanse, a greater connectedness to all things, and an awareness of being a part of the greater whole. Therefore, everything occurring in life takes on a greater significance. So our relationships change. Our relationships to our environment, environment changes. Our relationship and understanding of our place in the world, our nation, our country, our nation, uh, the world itself, our relationship with humanity, changes. There's an increased sense of brotherhood. Our, and our desire to participate and to take up a cause, to assist in some way along the threads of all these connections also grows. So And that is determined and how we serve, how we begin to work in the world, with the world, and in what category or in what department of life we choose to work with depends on our gifts, our abilities, um, uh, and I would even go so far as to say our rays, although I've not spoken about the rays here in this format yet. But all of that is combines to kind of determine where and how we begin to work in the world. Desiring to respond to world need through reading and current events, 
and an attention to what's going on in our world becomes more acute as we as we begin to realize our connection to the one life. Uh, back in President Kennedy's day, there was a an author who wrote a book called Silent Spring. Uh, Rachel Carson was her name. And uh, it was the first, I believe, the first book um, on announcing a concern about our environment uh, and environmental conditions at the time. And it was a warning about the pesticides being used to um, spray crops uh, all over the United States for crop control. Since that time, we have a plethora of authors who are writing on a lot of different levels in a lot of different areas. And I would suggest, I, I can send a list out if you're interested, but these authors have taken up the battle, okay, of calling out to what's going on in our environment within corporations everywhere. Nothing basically is really being done based on results, or is it? Nothing is really being done. Everything is still crescendoing, even, even with all of the signs of environmental danger. You know, we've, I mean, it's already said we've gone past a certain limit where it's almost like we cannot turn back. Although I'm one who always says, never say never. Um, so we stand on the precipice of great danger. It's not a matter of if we'll be affected. It's just a matter of when and how severely we will be affected. Okay. Thus, we have people who have taken up these causes in a strong way, like the Greta Thunbergs. And uh, David Attenborough, who's always been at it, you know, dedicated his life to the to the animal kingdom, plant kingdom, mineral kingdom. People need education. And as truth, as there is an attempt to hack truth right now, in our world, facts, the ability to get facts and uh, is is being eradicated in a way. You know, I'm, I'm speaking strongly and with strong terms when I say that, but it's true. You know, when one, when certain kinds of classes are taken out of the educational system, Books are taken out of the educational system for, and um, are tabooed for no good reason, then truth is being hacked. And we need to be able to connect with and understand what's going on in our world. Um, we need to be able to hold conversations with each other. We need to be able to, our educational systems need to support and as we know, <laughs> in that everything within our planetary being right now is being redesigned, there is a dying away. There are a lot of husks that are being let go of, of the former age that no longer serves us at this time so so as we are being rebooted um, within the planet and everything within the planet is being rebooted including ourselves um, we have to hold that in our awareness and um, just know that it is all part and parcel of that divine plan. 
study of civics and national and international structures would eventually lead one to learn as one begins to expand their consciousness and awareness and reorient to realize that we are a part of the one life. Then study of civic, national, and international structures would become important. And one of the leading ones, the most outstanding ones, is that of the United Nations. It's an organization created to serve humanity worldwide with an understanding, a deep understanding of right human relations. Right human relations is its keynote. United Nation reflects the divine plan for humanity, the planet and its kingdoms. Their concerns and influence are on all levels. They're concerned with averting wars, the safety and the well-being, not only of all humanity, but all children, regardless of persuasion, ethnicity, so forth, religion, so forth and so on. They're interested in social and economic adjustments and solutions. Through the United Nations, citizen campaigns kind of crop up spontaneously for people to join and get together to share and um, work together to help build a safer and more aligned community and civilization. So as we begin to expand our awareness again and reorient <clears throat> to the one life, we become solution focused to the wider life beyond our own personal ring pass knot, okay? Our localized environment. We become awakened to the linking patterns between us and that we truly are representations of the one life in myriad forms. And as such, that we are one, that there is no separation. Then there comes a sense through this awareness of divine love, a sense of love, a sense of connection to purpose. And, and the awareness that that divine love has given itself through the one life, has given itself to everything to all forms, be it a star, a planet, a human being, an animal, a rock. So then life takes on a deeper meaning and depth. We see through different eyes. We want to become involved as a result in more than what we considered life to be in the past. We see the one life, we begin to see the one life in all things. And therefore know that there is a divine purpose animating all things. We see the presence of the divine everywhere around us. And we begin to sense that divinity around us everywhere. And as a result of that, we no longer take things for granted. 
We look for the nuances, the messages of purpose inherent in an experience or a symbol. or a situation that happens suddenly out of nowhere, unexpectedly. For the ones with deep insight or who are more intuitively connected, this awareness organizes a new relationship with the world in and of itself. one begins to register and seek that positive pole of spiritual purpose within all beings. And given that recognition produces relationship, the spirit of truth then begins to reveal the way and purpose inherent in everything. The vastness of this connection to the one life becomes over time more vivid. And for some, it doesn't take a lot of time. It, it happens more immediately. Okay. There's some that can get the whole thing in an instant. Others, it takes a period of time. It's a revelation. We as humanity, then, are all connected. And we, as part of the human kingdom, are connected to all the kingdoms. Those kingdoms above us, as well as those kingdoms below us. And we, humanity, stand in that alignment, that tier amongst the kingdoms, as that gateway to the above and to the below. We are connected to those higher kingdoms through our alignment, our vertical alignment, where spiritual ideas and ideals come through this alignment, okay? And the divine plan in and of itself is transferred into our consciousness through that alignment, okay? We receive the plan into our minds and brains as ideals to strive toward overall. And then receptive to those ideals and ideas, we then turn ideally, <laughs> to steward those lower kingdoms beneath the human kingdom. I don't like that word beneath, but that are part of the planet in and of itself. Okay. So we take care of the animal kingdom, the planet, of the plant kingdom, the vegetable kingdom, and the mineral kingdom as we are guard, guardianed by those higher kingdoms who pass those ideals and ideas to us through the mind and brain alignment, mind, soul, and brain alignment. Through this exchange and stewardship, the one life then is able to evolve. And isn't that an interesting dynamic? 
through re reorientation to the one life, its life and affairs evolve. And we then become or are in service to that one life. So it's it's all an ongoing movement, everything connected, everything weaving together as one. Being a part of the human kingdom, that service then, we, our, our job then is really to service and assist humanity to come online. Focusing on one's personal growth is no longer the option. For our consciousness now includes a larger framework. Our ring past knot has expanded. Our focus now is then to, to, to develop human consciousness into a reorientation to the one life and into a likeness of the one life. So, yes, we become stewards for the lower kingdom, but we are also imp very important within our own kingdom. Because we are the creative organ of the divine. We're considered the planetary brain. We have been given, as I mentioned before, I think in a past lesson, the gift of creativity. As the one life creates, so are we able to create. It therefore becomes extremely important that as we stand shoulder to shoulder with each other in brotherhood, that light that we, or that understanding that we are being given about our connection to the one life has to be passed on to everyone that we touch, that we're connected with, so that that flame can alight on those around us exponentially over time, lighting up all of humanity so that all of humanity at some point in time begins to understand true, our true purpose, why we are here, what we are here for, why we're seeing what we're seeing in our world today and how to assist in the, the new birth of our planet. Our spiritual relationships as a result of these, this reorientation that can happen and will happen over time, our spiritual relationships with humanity are not related to others via parent, child, employer, employee, partner, whatever, what have you. Rather, our relationships are built upon consciousness. 
all of those other relationships, those outer forms, employer to employee, parent to child, husband to wife, brother to sister, all of those, all of those relationships no longer exist at death. Those contracts are, are over at death. But the only, what does exist, is this relationship of soul to soul or consciousness to consciousness. Same thing. This is the only true purpose that we have. And as our sense of awareness and connection to the one life expands, then our sense of what true relationship is also has to take on another meaning. In the experiential, pro in the experiential process of relationships based on consciousness, rather than form, we hold in that the grit of true relationship. And as such, we have to examine with new parameters relationships that are soul to soul or consciousness to consciousness. There's something called a spiritual age. What is the spiritual age of that soul? It's quite different from the age of someone, how many years have they been on the planet? What is the spiritual age? How long has this, how many, how many incarnations has this soul had? Which reinterprets relationships completely. A child can be an elder brother and much older than the parent or someone can have a totally different and uh, it's an, a totally different relationship as a result of the spiritual age and when we begin to start to understand relationships in, in terms of that rather than the physical age wherein we're limiting that consciousness that soul to this little box, when in truth, <laughs> they might be a teacher for you, a major teacher for you. We're all teachers for each other, but a major teacher. And often that age may not be reflected, that spiritual age may not be reflected into the life and affairs of the individual. It may not be noticeable. As they said, a younger brother may be superior in the outer life. And an elder brother who is superior to them in consciousness may be their child or an employee in this life. So having a sense of this, one knows better how to relate within the one life. Because that's what we're relating within. Our world right now is in need of right human relations more than ever before. And for the seeker, or the one who's reorienting to the one life, through deepened consciousness, it is of great importance, this topic of right human relations very important to the United Nations, uh, right human relations. If brotherhood is the keynote of all relationships, then the quality of those relationships is love. It operates in the world through karma. that we become related to different groups of people as a result of that. 
And this reminds me of an earlier teaching um, in, in these series of lessons that I've been giving given um, on, oh yes, the ashramic wave. You know, that many times groups of people come into incarnation intentionally or through a mission, really, where they are to work together for a particular focus, as all of us who are on the planet right now, are doing, whether we know it or not. As we birth a new age, the fifth kingdom, major planetary initiation, sixth to into seventh ray, Piscean age into um, Aquarian age. Yes, a lot is going on on the planet right now, and we signed up for this. So we're here for a purpose. <laughs> and there are many people, when I say that to them, <laughs> they get very upset, and they want to deny that they agreed to this. <laughs> but we've signed on for this. So what are we going to do? What are we doing is the question. How are we fulfilling that mission? Ah. And that love, that relation, the relationships of love, the quality of relationships of love operates in the world through karma. That we become related. So something, you are here to teach me something. I am here to learn from you or you to teach you something. And the aspect of the dynamic between us is how we learn, grow, evolve. And again, through this interweaving and working out of relationships, the one life evolves. All of us evolve. We are all a part of the one life. So when the one life evolves, we all evolve. When the one life has to shift, we all shift. And we have to realize, likewise, that when we do things that denounce our understanding and appreciation of the one life, it has an effect. And Mother Nature is going to stand for it, but for so long. So there exists between you a need for common growth, which is why we are all here. It's an ashramic wave. You serve one, we serve one another's evolution via ta our talents, our tendencies, our liabilities, what it is we're here to learn. The dynamics that will be built between you as a group will serve the growth of each Be we friends or less than friends? All relationships contribute to the growth and development of every consciousness involved. So those newly awakened, those who are newly awakened, discover their field of spiritual relationships and establish right relationship in all aspects of their life and affairs as a result. So when we are aware 
of this, these things that I, you know, when we've taken in all of these things that I've made mention of, then we begin to observe our relationships, okay? In a way that is, how do I say? Detached from the emotional, okay? We begin to realize a greater purpose. Because we are realizing a greater purpose, we're then able to step away from that realm of emotionalism and relationships and look at the bigger picture, right? So we begin to observe things like the tendencies of others, as I've mentioned now about three times, the talents or the gifts, the liabilities, the mannerisms. We begin to look at things like that. And we begin to ask the question, how do I relate to these, and how do these things relate to me, okay? And, hold on a second, I don't seem to be able to do this right now. So then we begin to examine what effects these things have on us. Okay. We the, the we look at the dynamics of a of a particular relationship, and we begin to ask why. What is the purpose of this relationship? Okay, um, it might be that it might be that. Someone is attracted to you or into your life and affairs who may lead to learn something about finances. Okay. And really, you too need to learn something about finances and that's the reason why the two there's been a a, a a magnetic attraction there's something that both of you are learning and you'll probably learn it together likewise um or maybe you need to be a leader in a relationship where you begin to learn more about the whole aspect of prosperity um, and it might be something that in this lifetime you, you obviously needed to learn. You just did not have, were not equipped with it, but came into this lifetime to learn that. So as a result, you will either be a leader within the, the relationship or you will be a guide or they will guide you. So there will be some kind of dynamic there. That's the way these relationships go. So with that information, we are able to take a moment and take stock and find out who we are to each other. What is it we're actually examining here? What is it that's being learned? Um, and What may I need to change about the way I work with this particular person, given the fact that I'm understanding a lot more about the dynamics and the divine purpose and plan with inherent within all things? Okay. So. With that. Let's take a moment, hopefully, that you understood this lesson. It's kind of a circuitous route in to the depths of the lesson. Um, but hopefully you are able to comprehend everything. And uh, we'll take this lesson into 
a meditation. And I ask that you prepare for meditation. Let's meditate together. Take a deep, deep breath. And as you release it, relax the physical body. Paying particular attention to the stomach and diaphragm. And allowing the breath to find its own natural rhythms. Take another deep breath. And as you release it, relax the emotional body. Seeing it as a pool of water. Take note of the surface of the water. And smooth it. Relax it. so that it becomes smooth and glassy, still, and reflective of the sun's light. We'll take a third deep breath. And as you release it, Make sure that the mind is awake, alert, and aware. And move your awareness out to about three inches beyond the forehead. three to six inches beyond the forehead, into the Ashna center. Know that here you are in control of all the chakras below. And that here, through the direction of your thought, you are connected to all of humanity, the etheric body of humanity. And through the direction of your thought, Connect to your soul. Know that it is everywhere present and simply direct it and it will connect. And sound a silent on.
And from this standpoint, we can connect as well. To all the new group of world servers, those beings of light like ourselves who hold the interest and love of this planet and the one life. and seek together its strength, its evolution, and the anchoring of the divine plan for this planet as a whole. We stand together as a group come together as one unit one soul one heart One mind. And through this bonding, and through this deep love for this planet as a whole, Seek that reorientation to the one life. Seek that vertical alignment. Sense that connection through every chakra. Moving from a horizontal alignment to our mundane world to a vertical alignment. To absolute divinity. in order to be impressed with the new incoming messages, blueprints and needs of our time in order to work seamlessly, intentionally, and strongly for the brotherhood of men. Know that in this vertical alignment, We stand connected with those higher kingdoms. That protect and guide us.
know that through this vertical alignment, that that which we strongly need for the benefit of the whole and for self, if not a selfish need, will be brought to us, shared with us. We will be shown the way. We will be directed. Because recognition produces relationships. Hence your connection from this realm, through this connection to the brotherhood of your environment. And from this vantage point, begin to evaluate the true purpose of your relationships. The true purpose of and within your relationships. May they stand revealed. So the true work can be done. And from this vantage point, examine right relationship, right human relationship. Examine those relationships that fall below that measure of what you may intuit and understand to be right human relationship. What are that what 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 do they need? What is lacking? How can they be improved? And hold within your consciousness this seed thought for a few moments. Thy will, Father, not mine, be done. Allow that seed thought to reverberate in your awareness like a gong, the sound of a gong. 
and simply, without attachment, follow that sound. Even into its silence, where it still resounds. And lastly, from this vantage point, what husks about you are being dismantled? What parts of you are dying because they no longer outpicture or manifest who you really are, what needs to be let go. In order for you to fulfill your next level of growth. In step with the planetary growth. 